Okay, so today we are gonna be finishing our fig wine for 2019. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you today, it's actually February 2020. Now I'm gonna go ahead and link the first video we did in this short little series on our fig wine right here for you. So that was back in November of 2019. So technically this is a 2019 wine, but we're not gonna get it bottled here until February 2020. So what I wanna do, talk to you a little bit about what we've done since the last video so you get kinda of caught up to where we're at today. Today. Last time you were here with us, you saw this basically in a bucket with chunks of figs. We hadn't done anything yet. So essentially what we did was we went ahead and racked that out of the primary fermenter. It was about five or six days past that. We started on November 24th. November 29th is actually when we went ahead and put it into the secondary. Now we did rack it a couple of times since then to get some of the leaves, that sludge layer off the bottom. That's already been done. And what we did this morning is we went ahead and degassed this. So we did our final racking. There was very little at the bottom and we went ahead and degassed it. When it was all said and done, we've got right at four gallons of wine. So we're ready at this point to go ahead and do some back sweetening. Um, however, what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and try it, see what it tastes like before we get to the back sweetening. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. What I really love about this, we've got this in our Amazon shop. What I really like about this Big Mouth Bubbler is the spigot at the bottom, very, very easy to test it. So you can kind of get a really good idea. Now, we don't use any clarifiers in there, so we just give it time in the fermenter, but you can see it actually came out really, really clear and just a beautiful looking wine. A little bit, almost looks like brandy. And I know our first fig wine, we actually added some brandy and made a sherry and you can see why it would actually do really really well as a sherry beautiful brown color that obviously comes from the figs can definitely tell it's nice and strong definitely getting that fig sort of floral caramel kind of scent to it mm, mm. very very good oh very very crisp one of the things I really like about fruit wines is you get a real like sharp crispness to it. Definitely getting that. Uh, it is definitely dry. Almost tastes a little off dry already. Definitely has that floral kind of caramely sort of taste to it. It is strong, but sometimes when you have alcohols that are this strong, it's just got this overpoweringly strong alcohol taste. And this one doesn't. Figs are a very good, sweet, almost like a honey sweet kind of taste to them. And of course, when you turn them into wine, you lose all that sweetness. So what we wanna do is we wanna kind of bring out a little bit more of that fig flavor. And in order to do that, we're definitely gonna to have to back sweeten. Now, one other thing I should mention, this morning we did add a couple of stabilizers in here. We did add Camden tablets. So the Camden tablets are in there to kill off any remaining yeast that might have survived the 17% alcohol. And we also added some potassium sorbate. So we did that obviously to make sure that if there's any yeast left, we're not gonna kickstart that again and wind up having them reproduce and knock a bunch of corks out of bottles when we go to bottle this next week. So we did do that this morning. It's been about eight, eight and a half hours. So it's had a chance to kind of off gas just a little bit and it's definitely ready for us to go ahead and back sweeten. So let's go ahead and go over what we're gonna use today to get that done. First thing would be a syrup. Now this is not a standard simple syrup. We actually do about half of the water volume that you would typically have in a simple syrup. So what we have here is six cups of sugar and about three cups of water. We went ahead and boiled that, turned this into a syrup this morning, had several hours to go ahead and cool down. So that's what we're gonna use as far as the sweetening agent for this wine. I'm gonna go ahead and use the degasser to mix this wine today, to mix in the sweetener to make sure we thoroughly incorporate that in there. We have a hydrometer and also a vessel so we can test the specific gravity, our final specific gravity. Now probably not too important there but we do want to get an idea of the amount of sugar that we're adding and trying to replicate that in the future especially if we really like the way this turns out. And then of course we are going to be keeping this wine in containers so the nice part about this big mouth bubbler and the spigot I can just use this tubing here attach it directly to the spigot to go ahead and refill our vessel 
vessels. So now we do have about four gallons of wine. So I have a three gallon vessel here and a one gallon vessel there that we'll go ahead and move this into. We're gonna let this sit for about a week just to make sure we don't re-kickstart fermentation. We like to give it about a week before we put it into, a, into the bottles just to make sure we don't have that fermentation going on again. So all of that, now what we need to do is go ahead and get this sweetened and we're gonna test it kind of throughout until we get just the right sweetness and come right back to you. Now we have that back sweetened. What we did was we took about four cups of the simple syrup and added that to our four gallons of wine. So we have just over four gallons now, but as far as the back sweetening, that winds up being about a cup per gallon of wine. Now this one we made a lot sweeter than we typically like our wines. The idea with this wine is it's gonna truly be more of kind of a nightcap, dessert wine kind of wine. So we wanted it to be a little stronger and a little bit sweeter. So now what we need to do is we need to test the actual specific gravity. So if we wanna replicate this in the future, we can. One of the things I like about this big mouth bubbler, very, very easy with this spigot to fill this up. And that should be enough for the test. So I'm gonna say this is probably about 1.010. Is where we're gonna finish this out. Maybe 1.012, right around there. Look how clear that wine is. And we added no clarifiers to this. It was simply the ingredients that we showed you in that first video and then time to let that settle out. But nice and clear, just beautiful, beautiful look. So at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get these moved into the vessels that they're gonna remain in for the next week until we get them bottled. So let's go ahead and get this transferred. Now, one of the nice parts about, again, about the way this spigot works, I'm gonna be able to attach this hose directly to this spigot in order to drain this wine back into these fermentation vessels for the next week. So now we're done. You can see we have these filled up again. Now I'm a little shy on my one gallon container here. This three gallon container, the three gallon mark is probably about here. I really like to top these up as much as possible to limit the amount of air that's inside the vessel. So what we'll probably actually do with this one is put it in the fridge. We have a second fridge. Uh, so it'll actually cold crash it a little bit probably. Maybe clear it up a little bit more. We'll kind of see how that goes. But this will be a good test to see whether or not we have any further fermentation that kickstarts. Of course, the last thing we want to do from here is wind up bottling these and then a few weeks later, the cork comes out and all of a sudden we've got champagne. And our goal was fig wine, not fig champagne. So one of the things I need to make sure I point out is adding that sweetness back in there really brought out that caramely kind of honey flavor. We use brown turkey figs for this particular wine. So those figs do have a real caramel, honey kind of sweetness to them. And when you add the sugar back in, you definitely bring that honey sweetness back in, that honey caramel sweetness in a wine. Just an amazing, amazing flavor. Very, very unique. Definitely something different from your typical wines. So just want to thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. Instagram and Facebook, we post content there you won't see here on the YouTube channel. In our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That's a free, painless way to help support the channel. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. I'm gonna link the first video we did in this particular wine, and that would be
Hello, everyone. Hmm. What was it? Specific gravity. Specific gravity, Dwayne. Facts and figures. I can test the specific gravity. Yep. <laughs> my, why are my words not working? <laughs> that sh sugar, sugar water. There are a hydrometer reading. It's not a hydrometer reading. Specific gravity. Mmm. That's good. Nothing quite like day drinking. 